today we're doing our case study. This is an educational series. We are not giving you professional advice. In fact, unfortunately, Bill can't join us tonight. We didn't think it through that it's a couple of days before tax season was a great topic, um, but he was unable. But we're still got a lot of great information that we're going to be able to share with you. But remember that this is educational purposes only. We have an amazing, our second hackathon. For those of you that don't know what a hackathon is, I'm only going to tell you that it's absolutely amazing. So we did our buying multifamily in a day last Friday. It was an amazing day. Coming up on April the 20th in Houston, Texas again, we have building a capital raising business. I'll be sticking a link in the chat a little bit later or you can scan this QR code. We are charging a whopping, I think it's $39. Uh, doesn't even really pay for lunch, but this is gonna be a full day talking about capital raising. This is our second series in a hackathon, and we'll have a little bit more information on our third one, which is gonna be asset management. But this was a phenomenal day. They even managed to find a picture for the moment that I was up on the front stage. So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about massive capital, the massive capital to add value to investors and partners. We're going to talk about 23, you're done, you're stuck, you can't really fix anything. And so how are you going to prepare for 24? So a little bit about massive capital, vertically integrated real estate company, owner operated for value add multifamily assets. We also specialize in ground up construction, and that's on retail, flex based, industrial, self storage, mixed use, and some multifamily. Combined with Realty One, we have 42 years experience. On the left hand side, you'll see we're involved in equity. Brokerage and property management is on the retail industrial side, not on the multifamily. We do development, construction, both metal and wood. And we have an amazing, massive capital mastermind. You are certainly missing out. Uh, we're going to have a couple of surveys at some point through here. If you're interested in learning more, it's incredible. So we have created 25 general partners in less than two years. It's pretty amazing. So you can see where our assets are. We're clearly very Texas focused, but we have a couple of properties in Denver, a couple in North Carolina couple in Atlanta, Georgia. Phoenix and Tampa are still here because we are working on some retail deals. Um, Massive Capital itself, you can see Realty One here has a lot of retail centers. They have about 290 million in assets. Massive Capital itself, about 1,387 units, 203 million in assets. We're squeaking close to that half a billion dollar mark. It's been a personal goal of mine since I joined Massive Capital a while ago. So these are all the team folks in Massive Capital. It, you can see a lot of folks that you're dealing with here on a regular basis. And then the bottom half of the screen is a lot of the folks from the Realty One team. Uh, again, it's super. We've been adding some really top key people to our team. Super excited about where we're going. A uh, lot of things happening at Massive Capital. And we're led by our fearless team. So we have Sharar, Sanjay, and Mike Bailey. And on the Realty One side, we have Bo, Pat, and Alexis. All right. So in 22-23, we closed 15. We have a new construction deal. We're finalizing the PSA in Houston, Texas. We have LOIs pending in Dallas, San Antonio, and Houston. We're 90% subscribed to our deal in Horizon. In fact, the whole asset management team was down there. They're spending the whole day there meeting with the property managers. Super excited about that. We still have a little bit of room. And tonight, since we're talking about taxes, we have a slide here. So if you think about this, if you make a passive investment in this tax season, you will get a $100,000 investment will roughly get you $38,500 depreciation for this year and a lifetime of the five years up to 72%. Now, each thing is different depending on your tax situation. So make sure that you talk to your accountant and get the proper information, but it's time to start planning 
and be able to use that bonus depreciation. So we're going to talk. About, Trevor gets Trevor gets on a roll. He's like, you can't slow him down. Am hey, I going go, fast? Go, <laughs> go back real quick, Trevor. I just said, uh, uh, can you hear me okay? I can, yes, sir. Okay, I know you can't see me. I was trying to get my camera up still, but there's my pretty picture. Uh, you know, and um, so again, we'll we'll run a a a survey here as well. This is on the 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 horizon deal. We still have a bit of capital raise there, and uh, still, you know, a, a great deal. Uh, so check. So one of the things I want to talk is here the QR code. You know, uh, try out the QR code there. See that that works out. It just brings you to our portal. There's no cost to sign up there, and there's no risk or obligation. It just lets you see our deals. Uh, that's all that does. A little information, quick sign in. So just let you see our deals as they come around. And uh, I tried to, I was earlier, I was going to talk on the hackathon. We actually, uh, we were over, we were at capacity in the room for the, that first hackathon, Trevor. Um, so I'm, I'm expecting this next one was going to be at capacity plus again. So we're, we're looking at uh, probably going to move to a bigger room for the next one. So uh, just letting everybody know, you know, it, it is going to be limited. Seating get signed up quickly. So back to you, Trevor. Thanks. Yeah, no, and I got I gotta say too that I was super excited. So when we when we launched the day, and of course we were checking people in, we had two folks came from California, two folks came from Florida, one lady from Philadelphia. And at the end of the day, I asked them, was it worth the trip? And they said, absolutely we will be back next saturday um so for me that's an amazing thing you know because when we first did this we really thought it would be you know folks in texas coming in for the day so we were we were super excited uh to be able to see all of those that those people that came got great value of the day um it was super exciting so we're gonna as i said we have one more and then we're actually going to run this series again later on in dallas um, so, but it's, it was very exciting. I was super happy. Now we have popped up a poll here and I want to tell you that the poll helps us design who's here, what do they need to learn about, who are they, how can we help them? So if you don't mind, please take time to fill out the poll. It really helps us out a lot. All right. So massive value add group learning by actually doing. So that is the biggest difference between our mastermind and then many of the other masterminds. Many of the other programs give you the information, say, go find a team, go find a broker, start doing the following things. Our program is very, very different to where we actually work on everything together. We underwrite deals together. We talk to brokers together. We do everything together, make offers together. Super excited. Last week, one of our students who's been in the program for three months, Ellen told me, don't tell anybody else, I didn't say it publicly here, but he's one of her favorites. He's been really, really working hard and he made a $30 million offer. Think about that. Now, we're low on the offer. We're not confident, but just think to be able to go through all of the due diligence to be able to get to the point. I mean, when you think about it, a $30 million deal, that's mind blowing. That is a very, very good deal. And the experience level that you can get from working through and doing it. So I'm super excited about the group learning. Um, I'm having the time of my life in case you can't tell. So massive capital partnership, we grow together as a team. So on new construction, we are looking to do joint venture with landowners for development, construction, lease up, done for you service. Want to make sure I'm clear. We are not looking for desert in West Texas. Things in East Texas, we are looking for key markets, you know, proper markets, not, not secondary markets. Any assets under that you have that you're struggling either to get finished built or to close, we are happy to be able to come in and see if we can help you on new construction. 
multifamily. Uh, we're really developing. We've hired a full-time asset manager. We have a full-time back end. We're going to do a whole session on our back end after um, where we've developed, where we're tracking all of our properties. So we've made this whole system. We're taking care of all the CapEx. That's what they're doing down in, uh, in Houston right now. The whole team is there. And then also credit enhancement. So if you're looking for somebody to be a key principal, that's the person with the net worth and the liquidity and the experience to be able to get a loan. Um, we have now added that to our services that we're offering to people. And we have our sponsor, Client Harbor. So if you're looking for a powerful CRM system, um, I'm going to be, I can't pop up links when I'm presenting. So we'll get that link in the chat to you later on where you're able to get some information. We have a two week trial that you can look at that particular program. All right, you're getting ready for 24. I know it's early in 23, but you have to start thinking now. So let's get grounded, active versus passive. Who's seen this chart before? right, from famous Robert Kawasaki. Okay, so we all know that the majority of the people live in the E quadrant. And the E quadrant is you have a job. I like to refer to that, that you go around the Monopoly board and you collect your pay. You may do a few things, you may buy a couple of houses, but until you do this world domination of actually owning a lot of real estate, you're still an employee. Then on the bottom, you have a self-employed. Really what that means is you own a job. Okay, that's a completely different, it's a different tax bracket. You're self-employed, but it's also, it is still a thing where it is you are trading your time, maybe some services, maybe some services of, of others, but not many. And it is also a very high tax bracket. Then you move up into the top right-hand quadrant, and we all know about this, a business owner, you own a system, a business, and people work for you. Okay, so there's the biggest difference there where people are working for you. So you are able to use the value add proposition to where your business, the people that work within your business, all of the pieces of your business, those things work for you and create your wealth. Now, where everybody should want to be is the bottom quadrant, which is investor, where you're not working, your money is working for you. And I know you've heard me say this a few times on this webinar, where the famous Warren Buffett said, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. Okay, so this whole concept of your money working for you is super, super powerful. Talked a little bit about this before, but I want to bring it up, okay? When you're an investor, you're not actively operating anything. So you've taken money from one of these other quadrants, right? Whether an employee, self-employed, or a business owner, and you've decided to invest that with someone else, often called in a syndication where you give that to a group of operators, and they take care of everything for you. You are 100% passive, and you earn money your money earns money. You're not doing anything. So we want to talk a little bit too over in this quadrant about the power of compounding. So I have talked about this on this presentation before, but I think it's a really super time. Even though we're talking a lot about taxes, I want to talk about wealth creation at the beginning here. So if you take $100,000 and the goal of most real estate syndication investments is to double your money every five years. So if you can take $100,000, give it to somebody else, you can do anything that you want while you're doing it. And the goal is you double it in five years, it becomes 200,000. Now you do it again, but you invest the whole 200,000 because you want to compound, you leave it for five years, it becomes 400,000. Now, five years later, you invest it again, and anybody doing math, $800,000. Now it starts to get impressive. You invest it again, and it becomes $1.6 million. Okay, that's pretty powerful. Now let's invest it one more time. $3.2 million in 25 years, assuming you double your money every five years, 
and you have no tax or other implications on your wealth creation. Um, I don't know if we can get like a whole pile of ones in the chat, but do you think $23.2 million would help you on your journey to financial freedom? So I'm only talking about one investment. Okay, imagine doing this a few times. Maybe you save every year and you can't put 100 in, but you put this concept of your money working for you and your money compounding is super powerful. Um, there is nothing more powerful than that. So I really want to make sure that you understand that. Um, and hopefully, hopefully we get that point because this is, this is the way to true financial independence. So on the other side, oops, sorry, we had some slides that popped up here. I didn't see them. So obviously, if you're in the fix and flip business, which a lot of people think are real estate, or you're in the wholesale, you're actually in one of the highest tax brackets. You're in the ordinary income bracket. So you got to make sure of that. And then obviously over here, there's rental income, there's dividend, interest from investments, handoff businesses, vending, other things. So all of these, is, I mean, we talk a lot about real estate here because that's our big focus, but there are many ways that you can invest your money. And it is also in the lowest tax bracket. And you get this amazing thing that comes with real estate investing, which is depreciation. This is the gasoline on the fire, right? This is what separates real estate investing from other investing. So we all know a little bit about accelerated depreciation. So it used to be in 22, it was 100% was able to be written off. In 23, it became 80. We're now in 24, it becomes 60%. In 25, it becomes 40%, but hopefully a new law will pass that will retroactively extend the bonus depreciation for qualified properties placed in service after December 31st, 22, back up to 100%. Again, it's not a done deal, but this is something that could be very powerful. It happens. Um, it could really change the trajectory of people's earnings. So just to understand the news currently right now, you can expense the cost of a qualified asset maximum $500,000 with a phase out threshold of 2 million. Generally qualified assets consist of machinery, equipment, off the shelf computers, certain improvements, non real estate property. And then they're talking about doing this deduction here up to $1 million phased out threshold 2.5 also modified in the, Section 1979, property tax. This is where having Bill would have been amazing um, to make sure. Mike, do you got any points on this particular section? Did I lose you? Yeah, no, Trevor, I apologize. I, uh, uh, don't be apologize. Yeah, I, st <laughs> I just was muted for a second there. Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, really, uh, it's, following back with the, the tax codes. And it's really like, you know, everything about it comes to the cool piece, you know, and Bill's Pilkington, our CPA is great at this. And, you know, some other ones out there like Tom Wilwright would listen. I listen to him watch a lot, you know, and it's, it's about just how the tax code, you know, is, is a basically a guide out there for you to make, you know, the most out of, what you do with the money you earn so that, you know, we always talk about nobody likes to pay or talk about people not wanting to pay taxes, but you know, it's the, the creative thing is setting yourself up early, like looking into the future, understanding what uh, the types of uh, income I have, what can I do? Uh, what are the types of investments that do have different ways to support me for what I'm doing and just utilizing the tax code like it allows here, you know, and uh, sometimes, you know, we're, you know, even looking at like the, um, we, we went ahead and, and did our K ones for our properties, um, you know, and a lot of, there were people that were holding off 
and saying, hey, let's wait and see what's going to come out. But we'll come back and say, hey, OK, we'll you know make some adjustments later. But, you know, it's you got to keep a pulse, keep your pulse on it, work with your CPA to plan ahead. That's those are the key things I get out of that. Yeah. You know, planning, Trevor, and the news that comes out. Awesome. Yeah. And in fact, this is actually a screenshot of where it is. So you can see here introduced. <laughs> so um, it's got a long way to go, um, but it's introduced and, uh, you know, you want to make sure. But again, it would be very powerful, but it has a long way to go. Let's hope and wait. Let's continue to invest. Let's continue to plan. And still, even at the 60 percent, it still is a powerful vehicle that does not exist in any other investments in that quadrant. There are some other ones, gas and oil and some other things that do have some tax credits. So don't get me wrong, you wanna take advantage of any tax credits. As Bill Pellington always says on our presentations, it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you keep that really matters. That's the most important thing here. So on this left-hand side here, basically this is, you can calculate your bracket, right? So if you're making less than 22,000, 89, 190, 320, um, th these are all of the different tax brackets. This is taxable married filing jointly. Um, so you can go ahead and look at what tax bracket you're in to do some calculating. And again, we talked about the bonus depreciation. Um, this particular year, it's still 60%. Uh, so you want to make sure that you maximize that. So again, if you think about it on, on our particular deal here in Horizon, we're still talking about a $38,000 tax deduction, passive loss against your passive income. So I want to make sure that that's clear. So if you have a full-time job, passive losses go against your passive income. They do not go against your employee income. OK, so I'll make sure that we're clear there. So but again, if you're a full time real estate professional, which many on this call are, um, then it can go against all, all of everything. I have some friends where they still have W-2 jobs, very high paying, but their spouse is a qualified real estate professional. Um, this is not the topic for tonight. But again, the most important thing is anything you can do to keep more money is important. Right. So post tax, you've got your W-2 income, you've got your business income, you've got your investment income. Post tax or pre-tax, you've got your money in your IRA, your Roth IRA or a Sorrel 401k. And then, of course, you can shelter money. You can put it into a trust. You can put it into a 1031 exchange or a DST, which is a Del Delaware statutory trust. Whole other topic. But this is basically a subset of the 1031 where you can put money and you can defer it. So again, one of the points I want to make sure that I reiterate, that Bill always reiterates, you are kind of kicking the ball down the path until you have a point where you think that it is you're going to be in a less, less taxable situation. So again, over here, if you're a high income earner in one of these higher brackets, but when you retire you're going to be a lower income in one of these brackets. It just makes a huge difference of all the different things that you can do. Um, I always tell people I have this plan, right? So I'm gonna make lots of investments. I'm gonna defer my taxes. I'm going to use a 1031 and then I'm gonna die. And when I die, my heirs inherited at a stepped up value. And again, it's all about not paying taxes, deferring as much taxes, and keeping as much as you can. This is just a few more charts of tax rate, taxable income, and then the difference on long-term capital gains, right? So again, you can see that it's substantially different, right? So your 10 to 37% tax on this side and your 15 or 20% tax on this side, depending on the value and what you've done. Um, you can see here the difference between all of the different ones. 
So the possible strategy is to reduce your taxable income, increase your tax deductions, maximize tax deductions, time income and deductions, restructure investments for tax strategy, and then improve your tax knowledge. And lastly, work with a qualified tax professional. Again, you can go back and listen to some of our presentations with Bill. Bill's amazing. Um, if you make an appointment with myself or anyone else in the Massive Capital team, uh, we can go ahead and set up an appointment for you and with Bill. And Trevor, when we get uh, towards the close, I think it would be cool to go uh, highlight the YouTube channel and, and the where people can find stuff on that YouTube channel now. Idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so as you go through it, and, I, and again, we, we, we launch about as many polls as we send emails. So we got another <laughs> poll running right now and uh, appreciate you guys' help and support with us on everything we do in there. I appreciate that. Yes. Again, long-term, long-term game, invest, invest and invest even if it's scary invest in smaller amounts and build your portfolio so tomorrow so go, hey trevor let's go, let's go let's go back to that one a little yeah. bit and uh you know i was um because there's a couple messages there as well you know is um it's the the time you know if you look at the timeline time frame right it's uh you know, we we're seeing. You know, I think right now people are seeing a you know a few le less deals that are naturally cash flowing up front as as we as we did in the last you know you know years uh, coming up to you know twenty twenty two and twenty three and and that kind of though is shows a little and demonstrates here you know the time frame of really getting towards your your building that value and letting the the properties build out the value right so it may not be cash flow heavy uh like you know a lot of people were looking at but the you know there are opportunities that are cash flowing um and horizon that we talk about horizon actually is even cash flowing from day one prior to even uh implementing our business plan you know per se you know it's already a cash flowing property as is which is really awesome and cool and we'll be able to have you know disbursements distributions or, or in the first year but the the over time is the really the the idea of, of the multifamily market and the syndications will build will build your value definitely over time so it's hang in there and as trevor said you know you you invest one this year, invest in a different one next year, and invest in another one the year after. And you, you start to build that ladder effect of deals that as they mature, you know, you get start to get your doubles and sometimes triples out in that, you know, th two, three, five year period, depending on the type of deal that you entered into. Any other thoughts there, Trevor? I think the most important thought is to keep rolling it forward, right? With this con compounding, you know, you, you really want to create this thing where your money continues to work for you. If you want to make a life decision where you no longer want to work for your money. Um, and then of course, obviously you'll build it up to a point. Um, again, if you use that example, I used at the beginning where you're growing your money up to $3.2 million. If you do that several times, you will reach a point where at some point in your life, you will make a decision to live off of the income of your earnings. You will no longer need to grow that nest egg, but what an amazing way to be able to do it. You know, a lot of folks, right, want to keep their kind of their initial investment in, in held there and be able to live off of the difference, you know, because again, it reaches a different point after wealth creation to wealth preservation. Um, and again, real estate provides both avenues of that to where you can you can get the best of both worlds. Yeah. And I and it's starting early. Right. And I know, OK, maybe, you know, some of our audience started in this later. You know, I started into the 
that multifamily. So I was in real estate for a long time, but really the multifamily and even limited partner investments I made was a little bit later. Uh, but, but the thing that I know now is I need to share that. So it's like, I need to share it with my family, share it with my kids, share it with my nieces, nephews, cousins, people that have an opportunity to take advantage of that earlier in their lives to, to make that multiple work in that compounding work uh, much earlier for them. That's right. Yeah. So we do have a question. Where do we make contact? I'm not quite sure that if I understand the question. Should you unmute yourself or explain it? I just want to make sure. I've been trying to watch for questions. Arthur. Oh, taxer. So if you connect with, make an appointment with anyone at Massive Capital, we always do a pre-screening before we send a uh, bill to folks um, so, so that uh, we do it. So just book a call, any discovery call with someone from Massive Capital, and we'd be happy to share who we use as our accountant. Um, we don't just publish it here because this gets spread over the internet uh, on YouTube and then hundreds of people will contact him that aren't associated with us. And it's an arrangement we have with him as our account. So um, perfect, thank you so much. Um, and then one other thing, we have one more session tomorrow. This will be the third one, Massive Masters, Raising Private Capital. Uh, we're going to put a link in the chat here in a minute for this particular one. These happen every Thursday at noon central. Um, Gabe actually was one of our mentors and uh, consultants that we hired at the beginning when I joined Massive Capital. That young man is in his 20s. He's raised $100 million. So I think he might know something. Um, and so he's going to be interviewed by Maria tomorrow. Uh, but super excited about this new webinar. So this happens the second at least i'm not sure if it's the second or fourth it's, it's every other thursday every other uh, yeah so every other thursday is the massive masters raising private capital uh which just is going to be building out you know bringing in experts and it it's not always going to be focused on people raising capital for uh real estate necessarily we'll we'll be talking you know to uh RIAs, uh, we'll be talking to, you know, maybe we'll have some family offices in, in here, uh, you know, and they may invest in other uh, areas. But what we're looking at is what are the ways that people are raising capital? What are some of those key techniques that, that really launched them and propelled them into their their real, you know, capital raising, you know, powerhouses that that many of them have become. So it, it'll be a great, it's gonna be a great series. Uh, it, it is interviews and uh, going, you know, back and forth discussions about raising capital between uh, Maria and the guests. And it will be, they will all be shared onto our YouTube in the future and in the podcast uh, as well. Awesome. So one of the things that I'm yeah. gonna, did you have the link, Trevor? I was looking. Uh, I'll put it in in a second here. Can you okay. see my new screen with our YouTube channel? Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to put it in the chat here to our YouTube channel. Um, and we have an awesome YouTube channel right now. And we've reorganized it. So for those of you that are looking for Wednesday webinars, it's always now going to be the first one on the top of the playlist. Um, and we've reorganized it. So this is all to do with, this one has not been reorganized yet in terms of data will be done tomorrow. Um, but this is all of our she, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. All of our investment opportunities. And so you can see the whole list of them here. Any podcast appearances we've done, any education things that we've offered. Here's some links about our massive mastermind. We have some personal in mind growth set. So we're really working hard to build out our YouTube channel um, and be able to. So we're going to put a link in the chat, ask everybody to sign up for it. And then I'm going to share one other thing that I am super excited for. Now, those of you that don't know, I am a big believer in our she group. And for those of you who've been living under a rock and don't know who Sharon Lecter is, Sharon Lecter is 
the creme de la creme. So for those of you that don't know who she is, co-author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, co-author of about 30 books. My favorite book is Three Feet from Gold, where people give up too early. Anyways, next Tuesday, April 16th, Sharon Lecter is going to be speaking. I actually drove all the way to Dallas to meet her last week. I was super excited to be able to meet her. She is such a powerhouse. She really is. Um, and it, it's just amazing. Um, just It's just so amazing. So I'm going to put in the chat here right now um, where that's for our YouTube channel. And I'm going to stick in here in a minute for the she group to join. And then I'll get the other one. I got a lot of chats. Very good. Anything else, Mike? We're pretty much wrapped up the main presentation part. The no, I don't. Uh, I was trying to think, Trevor, of uh, things. You know, you know, it's it's. Um, it, I wanted. I guess we talked a little bit about it last week, but you know, one of the things that's kind of on the same topic, and the, you know, is the is the K ones. You know, and you know, a lot of people are ready and wanting to submit their taxes uh, next week, April 15th deadline. You know, at the same time, I know a lot of people have either potentially or had to either uh, plan to submit their taxes and then later amend, or they've had to file, you know, an extension uh, to to submit their taxes. And sometimes that all revolves around, revolves around the K-1. And I, don't know if everyone here, you know, is that is that familiar with the K one? Basically, is the, you know, you you file a tax on a property. So we buy a property, we file taxes on that property, and then everybody that's invested in that property receives a tax document, the K one, that shows the, and that's where the loss comes in. So when we do the depreciation on the property that shows up as a loss on your K-1. So you always see a lot of people say, hey, I lost money on, uh, you know, the real estate, but I, but it's because they got such a great K-1. They made, they may have made money, but they got to show a, a you know, the depreciation that shows a loss and puts a, a reduction on their taxes. The, the one thing I wanted to share was what happens in the process of the K-1s is that timing, right? So you have to wrap up the, the full year of the operations, get all of the accounts settled, the bookkeeping and the accounts all settled. Uh, then you start moving forward. And if it's a deal you just close, you you got to have, you're pulling in the cost segregation studies. You're pulling in some other data into there. You're pulling in the full investor list updates and there's a lot of F, a lot of work that obviously goes into pulling all that together and being able to conclude and get those done by March 15th is a very uh, difficult uh, process. And it, and we were able to do it on most, I think we've got a couple deals that went a little past one that may go a little more past that, but uh, the, that process is, is, you know, goes on and it it's a uh, just something I wanted people to be aware of, of like everything that goes into bringing out those K1s for for people and uh, the work that needs to happen. And and I appreciate like everybody's patience as well. And, you know, letting the operators, letting us get work through getting that data out there. Trevor, you got any thoughts on that? Yeah, and and I mean, I'll be honest. I file for an extension every year <laughs> on, on everything, um, just because it takes time to get all your K ones and do anything. Um, and th there is no fee. Um, and and it's just if you have a massive tax bracket there, and you've not paid your taxes up quite correctly, there may be some sort of implication there. But in general, it, it's. Uh, it, it, it's 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 a very common practice for most investors, and I did put the link for our Thursday event as well. Right, I'm going to try again. I think here, Trevor, is a link that goes directly to the 
uh, site because I think that one. Oops, where did I? I just stole that one out of the WhatsApp chat because I couldn't find it. Yeah, no, no, it's great. Here's a. There you go. There's the massive masters. Uh, register, get signed up for that. Just you know, join us every every other Thursday at 12 p.m. Uh, it's going to be great, great content every week, every other week. Just looking around, any any questions or people yeah, just want to talk or chat, uh, feel free to raise your hands and share with us. I just launched the last poll. We will not do any more polls tonight. And we're actually, I said last week, we're going to have new polls. Uh, I, we, we created some new thoughts and questions and we'll consolidate into one or two polls to just make it a little more, you know, where it's not re repetitive questions. So appreciate again, everybody's help on these. Yep. Any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, Do they do such a good job? Yeah, it's awesome. But now it's, there's a, you know, taxes is a, it's a, to me, it's a, a tough time of the year. A lot of people uh, get uh, concerned and stressed over it. And uh, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of opportunity, though, to, to you know, protect what we've made during the year. You guys, everybody's worked so hard. Dan, you got something? Yes, sir. Got a question for you guys on the um, on the um, cost segregation study offsetting uh, passive income, and I just want to make sure I understood stood, um, Trevor correctly. So, with the cost segregation study and bonus depreciation, does that help offset? W-2 income or only passive income? Only passive income if you have a W-2. And again, ask your tax professional, but it's passive losses against passive income, not against that's, active income. That's what I thought. Okay, just wanted to clarify. Yeah. Very good, thank you. And uh, as yep. far as Horizon goes, I think you're gonna do a cost seg on that one, aren't you? We did, correct, we're doing it. Um, it's gonna be done. And as I said, it's about, 38%, so roughly, and again, it depends on your tax bracket in year one. And then there are still depreciations past year one, um, and it, it, it gets close to 72%. And again, it it varies on, but it, that's estimated. So it's, but again, it's a it's a fabulous way to, uh, you know, if think about it, right? I mean, real estate investing is already one of your lowest tax brackets, and then Put, put gasoline on the, or put the fire, whatever it is out and add that to it. It's pretty amazing that you can think about it, that you almost can earn passive income very close to tax-free. Now, again, you are just kicking the can down the road. So I want to make sure that people understand there is some recapture, but the recapture is not near as, as large as the, the gate as the the original game right 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 and just just to be clear on your example of accumulating uh 3.2 million over re consecutive uh reinvestments from yes. that initial from that initial 100k that's correct so it's assuming you double it every five years right. you have no tax implications and you always double it Right. Okay, it's, it's a, a lot bit, of assumptions, but it makes for yeah. makes for no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold your feet to the fire at all. I know there's a lot of variables, but it's just conceptually, if you just did that one investment, that initial hundred K huh. and it you know, wait five years and it doubles to two hundred, five more years, four hundred. So to get to that three point two, you're looking at like twenty five years. Twenty five years, right. Yeah. Okay. That's what I so you look like you still have twenty five years. And yeah, <laughs> we're, we're counting on so. you. And again, God willing. It, it's just, I do that and kind of simplify the math. And I mean, no matter what, right? The value of this is the compounding, right? So again, 
when you look at real estate investing, what puts real estate investing on steroids and what Rich Dad Poor Dad all talked about is leverage, right? So we're using bank debt. So, you know, we're buying a $17 million asset in San Antonio. We're taking 30% of that in investor capital. We're taking bank money. We're putting it together. Um, want to make sure that everyone understands on a deal like that, our investors own 70% of that apartment complex. We're taking care of the debt. We're servicing the debt out of the bills and all those things. But it's pretty amazing that that you, you can own a portion of it and you can get those tax advantages and somebody else does the work. A beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Thank you. So LLCs are an interesting, Diane asked to oh, send it to me directly here. So again, I don't want to make this too tax complicated, but an LLC is really a pass-through entity and it passes through to you as the owner. So I'm a single owner of an LLC. I do my business in my LLC. And when I take money out of my LLC, it comes to me as income. The reason I do it in an LLC, and, and you can or cannot, because again, you already are protected, but it gives you the ability. So for me, it gives me the ability. I, I have people that I pay virtual assistance. I, I'm here in Salt Lake City, so I can put that through as a business expense. So there's reasons that I use an LLC so that I can write off some of my business expenses um, because I want to come here. This is part of my business. And then once money's left over from an LLC, that comes into me as income, and then that goes on to my personal tax statement. So I hope that answered your question. And K-1s are distributed by May 15th, if they get there on time, <laughs> or March 15th, pardon me. Um, you know, we, we've just, I think, got our- If we did May 15th, we did May 15th, have- Pardon me, I'm thinking people. I'll be I, right. wish, I wish we had till May 15th. Yeah, May, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, Trevor. Yeah, it's okay. Um, Any other questions? That must have been a direct question to you. It was. I, I get a couple that are popping up direct. Okay. 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 Now, I have a question. Sure. Um, we're talking a lot about the tax advantages yes. of investing in these things. I've got a big chunk of money now sitting in a uh, self-directed IRA. Yes. Um, and I'm wondering if that makes really makes sense since we're losing all of those other advantages like depreciation and stuff in in an IRA invested fund or or is it possible that that depreciation could be accumulated? So depreciation does there is a small benefit of depreciation on an IRA when you when you end up with a taxable event that depreciation so so because you're using leverage and you're investing with your IRA and again I'm not an IRA specialist or an accountant you can be you can get a tax of an unrelated business income your depreciation would help offset your unrelated business income but at the, again, at the end of the day, it's growing your money in the most tax efficient way to keep it. So I have a lot of investments still with my self-directed IRA, but there are some that are better suited for it. So for example, we just closed the deal, Harris Ridge, and you've seen us talk about it before, but we just closed that deal. That deal does not have any depreciation. So I always tell people, because no one told me when I first invested, if you have cash, and you have an IRA, some deals might be better suited. So I actually invested in my IRA with one that had depreciation and used cash with one that didn't, and I should have done it the other way around. So I always tell people to look at your options and to look at it. But again, if you look at where your money is growing in a traditional 401k or whatever it is, it is just about the highest speed thing there is. They make it super hard for you to get your money out of there. So there are a lot of fees. So again, there are very few fees. So it's a really good way for you to be able to still grow your wealth. Um, and again, it's how much do you get to keep? And again, you have to remember you're only deferring taxes in your IRA unless it's a Roth. So if you've already paid the tax on your Roth, 
which I wish I had done when I had the opportunity and I had changed it around, then you can earn it completely tax free. Um, but again, you're just deferring the tax. So if you have 100,000 and you grow it to, to, to 3.2 million, you do own the tax on the growth. Um, at some point, once you start taking it out at your new tax bracket. So the concept of it is at that tax bracket, I have no W-2, I have no other income. So it is my lowest tax bracket, if that makes sense. Okay. Do you segregate depreciation uh, uh, on investor class? Segregate. So there's some class, there are some investor classes that are ineligible for depreciation. So you have to read the PPM very carefully. So there's some A, let's say there's certain things, and those ones are normally a preferred rate of return. And sometimes they, and it would be spelled out in all the documents, those ones are ineligible. Uh, for, they're more like a loan to the deal versus an investment. Um, and those ones often are ineligible to get the bonus depreciation. Right. So, uh, but majority of them are. Right, okay. Because yeah. that's what I'm thinking about is, I mean, I'm starting a fundraising business, so I'm looking forward to your fundraising group thing. But awesome. uh, I'm, I'm liking the ideas of that. And I'm thinking about uh, helping organize with syndicators to build those classes so that we can better target what investments to steer uh, people towards. So, yeah. Because that yeah. would be, that would be a, a, you know, if you, if you have offset, if you need to offset income and you're not a full-time real estate investor, we might recommend one, one class and yeah. basically all those sorts of trade-offs. So that will complicate, it's too complicated for most people to think about, but with advising, yes. you can really direct them for the maximum benefit and the maximum growth. So Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, so for example, I, I, I have a lot of passive investing. So for those that don't know, I've invested in 20 syndications, um, some of those inside a massive, but not as many. And then I'm a sponsor on 11, but there are some times where I put 50% of my money in this class and 50% of my money in that class and kind of like, you know, the, the double down. So because this one, okay, this one offers a 10% prep, but there's no upside, but I wanted to put my retirement money that way because I'm quite happy that way. And then I wanted to put my cash the other way where, you know, I stood the fact that if a deal went really well, um, I want to be able to collect on the upside. You know, so real estate investing, I always like to refer to it as playing baseball game. So it's all again, it's all, am I going to strike out? Am I, so it's all risk reward balance, right? So anybody who plays the game and going to win the playoffs, they get a couple of singles, a couple of doubles, and then they go for the home run. And I always tell people you should try to balance out the timing, the asset class, even the location, and some of the other risks and rewards of your, of your investment. Um, to be able to get that nice balance. Because if you continually go for a home run, the chances are you're going to have, you know, more reward, more risk. And so you want to balance out your, especially once you get into a lot of investments, you want to be able to have this balance. Because again, at the end of the day, if this is not a, this is not a sprint, it's a marathon, right? So you want to plan all of your, your stops and all of your transitions. It's, it's almost like we're handing a baton from one investment to another and, you know, you want to make sure. So very strategic if you can look at it once you reach a certain point of where I should put my money. Right, right. And again, yeah. taxes are super <laughs> important because you want, again, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep that counts. Hey, Trevor. Yes, sir. Thanks. I wanted to share because some people were asking, saying, hey, I still want to connect with uh, XYZ from Massive Capital. And I know you shared in the chat uh, the link for what's called, we call it the discovery call. And with that link, it gets you an option to come in, uh, depending on what you're wanting to talk about for different groups. And if like you come to Investor Relations, you're getting an option to, you know, connect who you want to at Massive Capital. Uh, and if I go, uh, uh, oops. I'm gonna go back here to Discovery. Uh, you can connect with some of the partners. 
you can submit have a deal submission discussion with uh, Ellen and uh, you know we'd look for people that have some real deals that want to actually talk about them and, and set up a time with Ellen there and if you want to talk more about education for example or our mentorship program uh, the massive master's program overall uh, then you can come here and book a call with uh, Trent Barden or Steven Schremer as well. So, so a number of options are you can get to almost everybody on the massive cap. And Brenda also apologize, and Brenda Avendano. Uh, so you can get to about everybody on the massive capital team through here uh, for for to book a call with them, set up some time, talk to people. Thanks, Trevor. Yes. Best Beth Wealth and Wisdom Practices, start investing early and keep investing and keep growing it. And again, you know, a lot of groups try to teach you about, oh, you want to quit your job. I'm, I'm very much different. You don't want to quit your job until you're making so much passive income that you don't need it anymore because of this compounding effect, right? So it's super important, super you know, that you you have this plan that you're growing it, right? Um, and you have the discipline. And again, if if I was starting all over, you know, like Mike mentioned, you know, I started pretty late in real estate investing. And when I, I talk to a lot of young folks that are just starting out and, you know, really just out of school, don't have anything. And I talk to them about, well, try to house hack, buy a house. And I had a friend, he bought a house, a three bedroom house, and he rented it out. And he slept on the floor in the basement. And then he bought the duplex next door and he slept on the floor. And now he's, and again, he's like 26 years old and he owns a 16 plex. Um, and, 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 and he's the sole guy. It's like super impressive right now. Again, that's active, right? Cause he's working on it, but that's okay. And so I'm telling him now he needs to get to the next level to where he's starting to earn the money that comes out of those deals and then let his money start working for him in a passive capacity, because again, you run out of bandwidth time, you run out of your own cash, um, and you need to be able to leverage and use the power of team, other things, um, super important. Um, I also have a YouTube channel where I recommend a lot of books about, uh, about wealth. Again, that book, Share and Lecture, Three Feet from Gold. Um, don't give up, keep going, keep going. That's, you know, um, super important. You know, Warren Buffett says the best time to plant a tree is yesterday. The second best time is today. Um, so if you haven't started in investing yet, you need to start today. Um, and again, if you look at some of the folks, I mean, again, look at Warren Buffett, right? The slow, methodical growth. And, and when you think about this, when we buy real estate, we're buying a business that is backed by an asset, right? So we're, in, we're improving the business. That's what we do. So we buy an apartment complex, which is a business. We make- Did I freeze or did that Trevor that was freeze? Did I freeze or Trevor? I think it's Trevor. <laughs> uh, so back to, I think it's just the whole point there was, you know, invest early, double down, and, uh, you know, you know, keep doing it, keep sticking with it. And, uh, you know, if you look at the long, long-term trend, that, you know, real estate, it's it's the growth that has, it, it, it is there, it continues. You may have short setbacks, but it, it's it's pretty, comes back fairly quickly to, to the base of where it was as well. So, uh, so yeah, those are great uh, tidbits for today. I don't know if there was any other questions, uh, Trevor. Yeah, thanks. Okay, Hector. Yeah, thanks a lot. And like I said, people, if you guys or anyone that wants to connect with the team, we make ourselves, you know, out there available, you know, to to everybody. So if you want to connect with someone on the team and do a call, just go in there and book a time. We so there's a lot of time slots. You can learn a lot one on one more about the team. If that's what you're interested in. So we're after. Wow, well, we're seven oh six or seven oh six central. It's uh, I've been here in Indy today, so eight oh six. So we'll stop the recording. Not sure. Let's see. There we go.